if you've been watching this channel for a while, and especially if you've been watching the live streams, you know I'm a big fan of Everyone Filament. I've been using them pretty much exclusively for PLA for the last couple of years now. For practical parts though, I generally tend to use PETG after the prototyping and testing stage, but Everyone recently reached out to me to see if I wanted to try their PLA Plus. So I said yes. Oh, and I have a discount code for you at the end of this video, if you want to get some for yourself. So before you ask, no, I have no idea what it is about everyone PLA Plus that makes it plus, but this has probably been the easiest filament I've ever printed with. I'm using my standard Cura profiles I made for the Snapmaker 2, which I just released a video about a few days ago, which generally give me pretty clean prints with regular PLA. And the only change I've made to those settings is to bump the nozzle temperature up from 200 degrees to 220. I dialed the temp up initially just because it was having a hard time extruding at the speeds I normally print PLA at 200, but after that it was plain sailing with no other changes at all. My plan was to do a test print and see what issues might pop up and then refine my profile from there. So I started printing a Benchy and it, it didn't finish. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, partway through the print, it detached itself from the build plate, something I've not had happen with the Snapmaker 2 before. Um, it seems that PLA Plus might need a little bit more squish than regular PLA, but I dialed the Z offset down by 0.1 millimeters and then printed out a little cube just to see if it would stick the whole way. And then I had a go at printing out another Benchy and this time it completed just fine. There is a tiny issue with overhangs here on the front that you can see, but other than that, it printed out just great. There's no stringing at all, bridging is rather good, and all of the detail is there where it counts. So what else have I been printing with it since then? Well, I really wanted to put stringing to the test, so I printed out this SD card holder tree thing. With these gaps in between each holder and gaps inside each of these 21 holders, there's plenty of opportunity for stringing to pop up as the head moves from one part of the print to another. But as you can see, that there, there is no stringing at all on this, and I've not cleaned this up at all since it came off the printer. This is exactly how it printed. And as you can see, if I grab some memory cards here they just slot right in with no issue whatsoever another thing i've been working on is getting parts together for building up another 3d printer from scratch this will be a large core xy printer with a frame built from aluminium extrusion this one was printed in petg on one of my i3 clones and it prints about as clean as you can expect I like PETG for this stuff because it has fantastic layer adhesion, which is often a big downfall of regular PLA for structural parts. It has a little flex to it in the event it needs to absorb some impact, which it shouldn't do on a 3D printer. But you can see here the telltale sign of PETG. There's quite a, a bit of stringing inside it. It's fairly clean as PETG goes, but there is still quite a bit in there. It's a noticeable amount. I also find that PETG typically needs to be printed a little more slowly than PLA to get consistent extrusion. The PLA prints, by comparison, printed on the Snapmaker 2 A350 look absolutely stunning. These were printed at my regular PLA speed, which is about twice as fast as those I use for PETG, and there's no stringing whatsoever. There were a handful of tiny zits on the Z-seam that were easily scraped off. These were caused by the fact that I was printing four of these at a time, so it's where the nozzle left one part to move to another, but it didn't happen on every layer. Like I said, there was literally like a handful of them. The bottom surfaces adhered to the bed well while printing, but would practically fall off when cooled. There was a tiny little bit of support material in these holes, and that broke away just as easily as they do with regular PLA. The sides look good with no sign of under or over extrusion, and the top surfaces look nice and clean. There are the obvious telltale signs of where the extruder was moving in one direction versus the other, but that's down to cure and not the filament. The PLA Plus parts are also dimensionally accurate, as you can see as I slide a piece of 2020 extrusion into there and it holds even without any screws being put in. This dimensional accuracy is important for structural parts. Often you're matching them up to manufactured parts and bolts that have very specific standard sizes. Like with this other thing I've been printing, a motorized two axis camera gimbal and I'm definitely gonna have to zoom you out. 
You can see I've already printed one of these out and built it up, but this one was printed with regular PLA. I wanted to see how it all fit together, what issues I might run into and what parts I might need to redesign. And I did have to redesign a couple. Thank you everybody who tuned into the Fusion 360 live stream for that. I had originally planned to reprint this in PETG for the final thing, but just as I was about to, that's when everyone asked me if I wanted to try the PLA+. Plus. The build video for this will be coming soon with PLA+. Plus but before we go any further with it, I want to play with this. This is really one of the coolest things I've ever printed. As you can see, you can fully automate camera movements with this thing. My plan for this is to use it to shoot interviews, to have it just panning left and right, as well as for shooting time-lapse to have really slow movements because you can set this thing to do a movement over five seconds or you can set it to do a movement over five hours. The build video for that will be coming soon but for now let's take a look at the print accuracy and see how close it really is. So here are all of the parts. The first time I built this I used all printed gears including the little spur gears that attach to the motors. This time around I decided to go with metal spur gears for the motors but I still had to print these two big ones. Because where the hell do you buy 128 tooth and 160 tooth spur gears from? When we look at the ends of the teeth we can see that they line up pretty much perfectly with the metal gear. And the profile view shows that they fit together very neatly. The central column on this big cog is also important to get right. This is designed specifically to fit inside the hole of a 6000 series bearing. There are parts to match the outside diameter of this bearing too. And this part fits inside another part that also gets screwed down. And then this all slots together like that. The cog then needs to be bolted to this big giant arm, as does an end stop trigger so that the whole thing knows what angle it's at. And on the arm, we need to have accurately distanced holes with an adequate countersink to be able to bolt on this Arca Swiss tripod plate. And the holes for all the different parts line up perfectly regardless of the orientation in which they were printed. As to its durability, well, my immediate thought is that it sits somewhere between regular PLA and PETG. I don't know if the camera will be able to pick this up, but there's definitely a slight flex to the parts which you'd expect more with PETG rather than PLA. When I printed this in PLA, there, 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 there wasn't this much flex at all. Everyone says this is thanks to a higher ratio than usual of flexibilizer. Yep, I didn't know that was a word either. As to how well it'll hold up in the long term, particularly those gear teeth remains to be seen, but I'll report back in a few months once this gimbal's seen some serious use. For now though, I'm extremely happy with everyone PLA. It prints super easy and it looks fantastic. It's dimensionally accurate and more than likely it will probably replace regular PLA for my prototyping needs and possibly even some final pieces too if they stand up to the job. If I had anything to complain about, I just wish it was available in more colours, particularly orange, and maybe some of the transparent colours that we often see in PLA, PETG and TPU. But if you want to try Everyone PLA Plus for yourself, then you can buy it in all the usual places. But if you order direct from everyone3d.com and enter the code John Aldred on checkout, you'll get a 10% discount on your entire order, and they usually ship out from your local Amazon warehouse anyway. That's it I think for everyone PLA Plus for now until we build up this camera gimbal. So until next time, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and click the bell if you want to be notified whenever I put up a new video. If you have any questions about everyone PLA, things you want me to test with it, or any questions about this gimbal, like I said, there will be a build video coming soon. Also let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.